I mean, this they are valid. can bust us airflow wide open for us. Because, I mean, he's got great vision. He's got great feet. He runs like a running back, and he can throw the ball. Coach, who, uh, who are you going to start next week? <laughs> who am I going to start? Yeah. Tell you what, gentlemen, I'm thinking about revolutionizing the whole thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have four balls. Do a hell of a lot of reverses. That's what we're going to do. Hey everyone, it's your boy JB here, and today we'll be talking about the invention of the Theravalve on the trombone. But before I go into the history of the Theravalve, it's important to know how valves work, and just a little history about what valves were used before this revolution in valve design took place. Huge shout out to Marcel Schott for providing me tons of high quality photos needed to produce this video. For a period of over 100 years, if the trombone had a valve, it was a rotor. This is a simple design that when activated, bends the tubing at a 90 degree angle. While having a valve does allow you to play the low F partial and third octave C in almost first position, the sharp bending in the tubing caused air compression to be lost when played, whether it is activated or not. For this reason, many tenor trombonists back in the day preferred straight trombones while bass trombonists had no choice but to use one. But it wasn't just rotors. Some trombones from the mid to late 1800s were made with a Berlin valve, which was a piston design that was originally intended for French horn in the early 1800s. But for whatever reason, rotors were normalized and that was what trombones were made with. This would all change in the 1980s when for the first First time in over 100 years, a trombone with a new valve design was manufactured and instantly became a favorite amongst many trombonists. Welcome to the Trombone Channel. This is the history of the Thayer valve and its inventor, Orla Ed Thayer. Orla Ed Thayer was born on April 1st of 1920 in New York and grew up playing the French horn. He attended college playing horn at the Eastman School of Music studying under Fred Bradley. Fun fact, at that time, the trombone teacher at that school was Emery Remington, which I will make a video about in the future, so make sure you're subscribed. During a lesson on a Mozart horn concerto, Thayer asked Fred, how did anybody play this without valves? Fred explained that looped pieces of tubing were added to change the key of the instrument. He then thought that if a valve without the sharp bends of a rotary were made that a French horn would basically play like a natural horn. Then, on December 29, 1947, Thayer mailed to himself this sketch to patent his own idea. His idea was to create a valve where the air flows between two parallel tubes. In mechanics, this is known as an axial flow, which Thayer would later call it the axial flow valve. But because he didn't have the resources to build one, he just shelved it away and put it to rest. In the 1950s, Thayer managed a hardware store in Rochester. It was here where he met his secretary and later wife, Barbara. In 1959, Barbara and Ed Thayer moved to the Pacific Coast in the state of Oregon. There, he worked as a carpenter and machinist. Needing to improve his math skills, he attended Santa Barbara City College. This added knowledge gave him the ability to become an oceanographic instrument technician at the Oregon Marine Science Center. Thayer left this job after just a year because he felt the ocean life wasn't for him. So he worked as a department supervisor of the Science Center until 1982. But even before then, in 1976, Thayer's life would change forever, for he would finally have a reason to put his Thayer valve design to real-world use. A friend of Thayer's was planning to attend the 1976 National Association of Music Merchants show in Los Angeles. Selmer, now Con Selmer, was planning to release a new French horn. Ed figured that this was his opportunity to put his Thayer valve design to use. So he put together this model made from plastic tubing and had it mailed to the representative as a potential idea for the French horn. The representative liked the idea and wanted Ed to build a working brass model. So Ed had one made from the drain pipe of a kitchen sink and traveled to Elkhart, Indiana to have it shown to Selmer representatives. When they saw this, they were still impressed with the idea but wanted this valve to be applied to a trombone instead of French horn. This was because most complaints came from trombonists who had to deal with playing through stuffy valves. So Ed agreed to build a prototype for the Bach 42B. After four more trips to Elkhart, the first trombone with a Thera valve was built. But it was never produced by the company. For whatever reason, Ed and Selmer were unable to come to terms. 
So, Ed and Barbara decided to make their idea a reality. They started by installing their Thayer valve onto a Con 8H, a large bore straight tenor trombone. And this is what it looked like. <laughs> It wasn't a cone shape like we're used to seeing. Instead, it was a cylinder, looked huge, and was much heavier than normal rotors. This was also evidenced by the Thayer valve's first patent, which was issued on September 12, 1978. But now that Ed had a trombone with a working Thayer valve for people to try out, he took it to the 1980 International Trombone Workshop, now Festival, in Nashville to have it play tested by many trombonists. Despite its large size and rudimentary design, everyone who tried it loved it. It was the most freely blowing F attachment they ever played. In this and future redesigns of the Thera valve, this was what people had to say. Tom Beversdorf, who died not long after the valve's invention due to an asthma attack in 1981, said, Very clean. Feels like a straight trombone. Much freer than anything I can recall. And in 1985, after the Thera valve had evolved to the design we all use today, the entire trombone section of the Baltimore Symphony, including Doug Yeo, were playing trombones with Thera valves. That same year, Doug Yeo won the bass trombone position of the Boston Symphony with Thera valve number B6. The list of testimonials for the Thera valve are endless, but the verdict remained the same. This F attachment was unlike anything anyone ever played, and everyone could not wait to get one of their own. While people liked how the original cylinder design played, they couldn't get over how big and heavy it was. Ed knew the Thayer valve needed to be in the shape of a cone to compensate for this. His first attempt at doing so was this canister design, but because that was difficult to seal, he later settled on a pure cone shape. In 1982, Thayer wrote about his new valve design in an article in the International Trombone Association Journal, heralding to the trombone world the arrival of a new valve coming soon. A second Thayer valve patent was issued on September 4th, 1984. In this patent, the Thayer valve was still reversed, and manufacturers eventually pointed the valve forward. Even after the design of the Thera valve was finalized in the mid-1980s, trombonists with the valve were still at a disadvantage to those with traditional rotors. The disadvantage of a Thera valve is the large amount of metal-on-metal -metal contact that needs to be constantly lubricated for it to work right. But that is only the tip of the iceberg, so I suggest you watch Aiden Ritchie's video The Thera Problem using the link below to learn more. The second issue, although not as universal as the first, was that some people, such as myself, still preferred rotors. Rotors. Among many things, the added air compression of rotors helped some players produce lower notes easier. When some people started to realize that neither the Thayer valve nor the rotor was a one-size-fits-all, a few decided to invent even more valves for the trombone in what would be known as the valve arms race. Get subscribed so you don't miss that one. The Thera valve revolutionized the trombone community. For the first time ever, trombonists had the option to play a trombone with a valve that had less adverse effects than a traditional rotor. That'll be all for today. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.